Why are we told about Eshet Amram, who is Yochevet? Question one. And then we're told about Aaron, Moshe, and Miriam. It's quite uh, not according to the pattern that we saw until now. So we're leaving that in the air for a moment. And then we're told about the children of Aaron. Look at me. You already know. Moshe, how many kids did Aaron have? And their names are? I didn't ask you, Thomas. One second. Go ahead. Uh, Elazar, uh, who is, and, and uh, I want to let Thomas answer the fourth. Okay, Tom. He, 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 he really Itamar. Does. Okay, so four kids, the two prominent sons of Aaron died in a terrible event where they tried to get closer to God on day number eight, eight of the inauguration of the Mishkan. Eish yatsa me'et Hashem. Fire came out from God through the Kodesh Kodeshim. They were apparently bringing a Ketorah offering or something like that. An Eish Zara, a strange, uncommanded fire. Boom. On day eight, tragedy and happiness happening at the same time. Their names are mentioned here, like it says in Samech Aleph. And we get to the sum total. Let's go read it to the end of the section. Vayu Fikku Dehem. Samech Bet 62. Shilo Shav Esrim Elef. Who? Kol Zachar. From what age? Mi ben chodesh v'mala. Ki lo hatpaktu b'toch b'nei Yisrael. Ki lo nitalem nachala b'toch b'nei Yisrael. Let's summarize. Here, we're learning about the Mifkad of? Levi. Shevet Levi. Comprised of how many families we said? Three, Three major families. And they're counted from the age of? One month. Mi ben chodesh v'mala. And there's some total of? Of their counting is 23,000. And now let's hear in order of the Psukim questions. Number one. Question number one. From, 50, from 47 and on. Let's raise questions. What was the first question some of you raised? 47 or 57? From verse 57. This section, which I'm stopping here. Question number one. My ears are bothering. I don't hear anything. Why count from a month? Why count from one month? Question number two. But I wanted you to do in order. So you're doing that in order. We'll accept it anyway. Next. Why is Yochevet mentioned? mentioned? Why are women mentioned? Question number three. You, you asked this question yesterday at the end of the shore. Um, why are we mentioning those uh, maybe tribe because I mean in the context of what they don't have a part in the land. Beautiful. But, uh, That's what everyone is asking. All the Rishonim are asking this question. If we're talking about a Mifkat accounting and it's in relation to La'ele Techaleka Aretz to these, you shall apportion the land, or the land shall be apportioned. We know that Shevet Levi did, did or did not, did, did not get a land. So what do they luft mention with their feet in the air? What, what, what do you mean they get a portion of the land? What does it mean? Do you remember our understanding when we study this? Moshe, do you remember? Mr. Yosef Strax, I don't hear you. You're not in the bullpen, are you? I want you to be in the shore. Why? What does it mean that Levi doesn't get a portion of the land? It means what? that what they get as inheritance is not... Uh, actually, it, it, it's not the land itself. Ah, they're living in the air. Is that what you're saying, sir? I beg your pardon. Well, Levi is dispersed amongst the nation. Let him answer. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying, Yossi? That, that they, their inheritance is in every part of the land because their inheritance is the work of Hashem. The work of Hashem is required throughout in every inch of the land. So it's like the entire land is their inheritance. I think many tribes would say, I beg your pardon. Mm. They're not, get out of my land, they're going to say. Your, your answer is a partially correct answer. Thank you. How can we further the understanding, gentlemen? What does it mean that Levi doesn't get a portion in the land? Every other tribe gets a portion. What does that mean? What, well, are they going to be living in the air? Where are they going to be living? We learned in the end of Vayikra, chapter 25. Are they living in? How many are they living in are there? Because it's comprised of? How many cities first? Six. Six. Okay. Arei. Miklat. For people that killed. Uh, unintentionally. unintentionally. The word in the Torah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the word in the Mishnah. I'm sorry, Mishnah Makot or Sanhedrin. I forgot the word uh, in the Torah. Six. Arei. Miklat. Three on. The west side. And three on the east side. 
my son that's traveling in Jordan right now sends me some pictures, he and two others with one pair of children, they, they got by the border. <laughs> so he sends me a picture, he says, Abba, where are they hiding? Where they hide, I don't know, they hide him in the ticket. Uh, shall yad here, shall rosh there. <laughs> I don't know, that's a, probably a known fact how to trick the Jordanians. In any event, he comes up to, uh, shows me from Yama Melch, we're now by Nachal Zered. I said, wow, we just learned about that in the other portion of the week. That's what we came up to, to the Moabite, uh, to the, Ed, no, after we encompassed, we went around the Edomite. Uh, mountains from the east, we arrive to Nachal Zered, and then Nachal Zered flows into uh, the no, the Arnon, oh. and the Arnon is the most southern border of the Moabite entity. So much for pictures. Now let's go back to here. Six cities of refuge for Rotzach B'Shogeg plus forty-two cities as dictated in Vayikra 25. We learned that, right? Some total of? 48. So they're not Luft mentioned. They're not people in the air with their, finger, with their feet in the air. They're not a bunch of astronauts. Their feet are on the ground. They have a place to live. So what does it mean that they don't have a Nachala? What does it mean that Shevet Levi doesn't have a, a, a tribal area? For what? They're dependent on everybody else. As, as what, is, as what, what does it mean? Meaning they don't have an area in order to generate revenues. Right. They, they don't have a land other than their homes, the little ra ranch around the, the area, something for aesthetics or outside the area as the, as the Talmud explains, but they don't have actual land in order to cultivate it and generate revenues and make their Economic welfare. Is that clear? That's what we mean that Shevet Levi doesn't have a Nachala in the land of Israel. Obviously, there are 48 cities. Each of the 12 tribes will allocate. Some three. three be, some three, some four, according to the yeah. division, uh, so that they have a place to live. Now, if this counting we just learned is for the in order to what to divide the land out, so you asked of it, Adler, four minutes ago, then why is it stated here they're not going to be getting land to be allocated to them? Good question. So we've asked about three or four questions. We're going to stop here and begin answering. The Ramban asked this question as well. What in the world are we doing? A Mifkat of Shevet Levi. And he says, well, we have to, we need a number to know to basically divide, to give them lands which family is larger, and they're going to get a larger land of the of 42 cities, or and so on and so forth. Or, you know what? Who remembers the term Rashi uses, the name of the Midrash? Shevet Levi is God's legion, right? Legion. It's apparently a Latin word that was used historically uh, more than a thousand years ago or so. Legion Shalmelech, the tribe of Levi, the legion of the king. And therefore, out of respect, Shevet Levi is counted. Next question. Why are they counted from the age of one month, one month and not? Let's use what Matanya said yesterday. Who heard what Matanya said at the beginning of the show? What would be the purpose of the counting of the tribes? We said lechalek but what will be another, an alternative or a secondary purpose? Well, fight. To fight. Is that what you said? Yeah, no, to right? no we, we, that we did in Bamidbar chapter 2 and 3. Right now, we are months in front of us only to go into the land and facing war possibly. And therefore, uh, so how is it connected to here? I just lost my train of thought. So therefore, ah, so what is Levi... One second. Ah, Levi's ah. So that's what we counted the other tribes from the age of twenty. Ben Esrim Lirdof. Repeat those three words. A Mishnah in Perkei Avot. But Levi is not going to be pursuing. They're going to be the holy Jews, watching the camp, watching the uh, the camp with the Mishkan meaning all the holy articles. They're not going to be going out to fight apparently, and therefore there's no need to count them from twenty years. Who's a Bechor? Are you a Bechor? Would you like to be? No, you can't become a Bechor. Are you a Bechor, Mr. Uh, a little bit old. You, what? A little bit old for a Bechor. No, are you the Bechor of your family? Oh, yeah. You are? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
what mitz you the bechor, right? We remember when do we perform your bechor as well? When do we perform what's the name of that mitzvah? Pejona bechor, the redeeming of the holiness of the bechor. When do we do that, Mister uh, Yisrael? When do we do the mitzvah? of Pidyon Bechor, of a baby that's the firstborn to open the womb of his mother. How many days old? That's correct, 30 days old. Very good. 30 days, that's what you meant to say. Eight days, the Brit Milah. 30 days is the Pidyon Haben. Why? Otherwise he's going to get counted. Why 30 days? <laughs> Why don't you just keep on arguing, then we'll get to ask someone else. Not only then, even today, this crib's death. If a child, if an infant, I'm sorry, lives 30 days, he's now no longer under the criteria that he might die as if a crib death or something of that nature. 30 days is enough for the bones to formulate, to, to, to grow, and so on and so forth. And therefore, he's no longer called in the language of the Gemara, a nephel, from the word nephal. Within 30 days, he may be, God forbid, a nephel. He requires much more attention. And therefore, 30 days, he's considered a human being as, as if more 30 days and up. So when 30 days pass on day number 31, we do the mitzvah of Pijon Abin. That's what the Levim are being counted from here. But let's go back to the first question. Ah, so we answered that. Ah, let's go now to the number question. 20, how many? Three. 3,000. Yehuda was 70 what? 6,500. I forgot the number. Yudah was 76,500 from the age of? 20. And Levi is how many? 20, from the age of? One month. One month. What's your problem? Uh, far, more, uh, far more than Yudah, than 76,000. Because they're counted from one month. And so who remembers? We dealt with this briefly. One answer? Because they weren't afflicted in the time. Ah, very nice. The term that the Torah uses, kasher yanu atoken yubevach and yifrot, as they were afflicted, so too did they grow and multiply. There was one shevet, one tribe that was not in bondage, and that is? Therefore, they were not under this providence of, of, of this metaphysical blessing that they grew in numbers, families, you know. My daughter was a Mialedet in the, the Tzanza. You know, you, you know, in Netanya, there's a hospital run by Hasidei Tzanz. It's called Laniado. Have you heard of that hospital? Okay. So one of our daughters-in-law is a, a nurse, and now she's a Mialedet. She's a Hebrew, English? A midwife. A midwife. So we, every Shabbos, every Shabbos, we call up our children, or they call us, and we wish. She says, uh, she just came on, just gave birth to triplets. Is that great? She had a wonderful time giving birth to three Jewish children coming into the world. That was a fantastic thing. That blessing was not present by the Shevet Levi because we're not afflicted. Another answer, anyone remember? Why the low number? Huh? Nisara uh, Saviv. I think that's the wording in Tehillim. Uh, the Gemara says on that term that around the tzaddikim can be stormy things. The greater we are, the more we fall. The greater the tribe is, the greater the men of the tribe they are, they're prone that even if they just deviate a milliliter, a millimeter, I'm just checking to see if you're in pain. Person. A millimeter, bang, they get punished. The greater the righteous are, than if they just deviate a little. And therefore, the Gemara says, and I'm quoting, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Midakdek Im Tzadikav Kechot HaSe'ara, like a hairline. Hashem is precise, exacting punishment with His most righteous, even if they just deviate a little. So that's an explanation that they're dealing with such holy, wor holy work, like the Ark, Kehat, and so on and so forth. There's a, there's a Talmudic expression, the work in and around the Holy Ark would, would cause them to be devoured, would cause them to die. Meaning, if they didn't do it properly. So those are two explanations that we gave for the low numbers. Any questions before we go on to the next section? Yes or no? Okay, we're going to stop this show right now by hitting the red button.